Hello, welcome to another video um, on my channel. My name is Allie from amariespeaks.com and um, this video is kind of a side shoot or offshoot to my Comprehending Consciousness series, episode 20, Mind Control and MK Ultra. Um, it's sort of also this video will be emerging in a continuation off of another um, segment of videos that I put up on BitChute only. Um, which is about the negative agendas, trips, tricks and traps, excuse me, <laughs> trips as well, um, bad trips, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but I really want to make a short video here that is uh, dedicated to the techniques and tactics of mind control um, that we are encountering here today in today's world. Um, now, if you're new to the concept of mind control, definitely go, I will link below um, episode 20, where I just talk a bit about like what mind control is and sort of like the misconceptions about it and um, and also just, just a little bit about uh, the reality <laughs> uh, and the nature of mind control. And so if you're one of those people who has some... Um, skepticism around that word or feels that maybe it's not possible or not true um, or it's hype or something, I highly suggest taking a watch at that video um, just because I really don't want to get um, side railed and go into again about how crucial it is that we understand um, the pyramid structuring of hierarchy and how those at the top, of course, are surveillance and control mechanisms um, to ensure the bottom section is working in, in the way that the system's designed. Um, it seems uh, contrary to common sense for, for me personally to really ever assume that in that type of setup, uh, hierarchy of power and control that um, those at the top wouldn't be working together collectively in a group to ensure that their system or pyramid or corporation or group or, or project or school or whatever you want to call it of the, the system um, isn't you know operating beneficially for it. <laughs> of course they are monitoring it. Of course they are tweaking it. Of course um, they're paying attention to every financial transaction and, and every keystroke and, and what all of the little cogs in the wheels are doing, you know? Um, that is the point of the managerial hierarchy, right? Um, and so, I mean, it's crucial to them to get everybody taking a part in the, in the system to turn a blind eye to that fact or to um, more conveniently agree and believe in the good guy theme that, of course, those who make it to the top and those who are overseeing the whole thing have your best interest in mind. Why wouldn't they? Because you're a part of the system. So for your best benefit is the system's best benefit. Um, that line of thinking in, is infused with lies. And um, if you can't see that, then um, internal work is really needed to be done. Because in, if you can't hear and feel your own truth, you're, you will have a very difficult time neg um, navigating you know, in the external world. And unfortunately, the 3D matrix overlay, this negative artificial infringement system that's been placed here and, um, is growing so beautifully in, in the fertile ground of third dimension, th in th three density, fourth density here. Um, it really is banking on everybody turning a blind eye and just agreeing that, of course, the good guys made it to the top. Of course, there's... Uh, the best people, you know, with our best, be our best hopes in mind at the top. Um, they they're really banking on everybody just sticking that stake in the ground and, and believing that to the very core of their being that that is the truth. 
And that's how mind control begins. <laughs> that's how it all starts. Um, and so, like I said, if, if this is something new to you, if this is something that you're skeptical about, this video probably is not the best video to start with. This might be a triggering video to you or it might just cause more confusion. Um, so I apologize ahead of time if you continue to watch this and you don't understand. Um, however, if you are on the same footing, and, and we do understand that we're in a common ground here um, in this place and space, in an energetic world where we have these these systems that function to gain adherence, to gain more energy bodies to be a part of them, to gain more power and flow and, and a higher charge around them. Um, when we start to realize we're operating within a world like that and that we are in charge of our own energetic vessels and, and, and we make the choices of where we put our service out at, um, that creates a space of sovereignty. That creates a place of sovereign responsibility, of worth, um, purpose, you know. And that space is the space that I would love for, for the Common Collective to be standing upon. And that's where I'm going to speak from. Um, and that is where I operate from and how I ensure that my um, physical body, my space, my direct reality is as clean and clear and transparent as possible and in that knowing and in the operation of keeping myself um, honest and transparent and seeking positive polarity I uh, my reality and my direct world tends to skirt the fringes of this matrix overlay because um, my my energy is not conducive or, or, or conductive or, or alike to the negative agenda and so it tries to push it push me out and um, anybody who chooses chooses that path the sovereign path of worth to go for what they feel is right um, they will notice this gradual pushing out of the, the 3d overlay matrix the negativity the drama the stress um, you know they will notice those things less in their lives um, and, and that in itself is to me confirmation and proof of um, the overall balance seeking for the goodness and, and, and enjoyment of those people who are alive at this time, right? Um, I really do see Source's exploration here as um, a chance for enjoyment and adventure and um, surprises and excitement, you know, uh, newness manyness um, and and for that very notion of truth within me the choice to go after that to accept that and encourage that um, I don't fall victim to a lot of self-serving negative agendas and in fact they don't seek my service either because I don't play their games and I don't align with them and so um, I find myself happily on the fringe of most things. If you so choose to do that in your own world, you will notice the same thing, you know? Um, and and that's what I'll get into also um, in further future videos when I bring in the solutions because the whole side segment videos that are happening on BitChute about the negative agenda and uncovering these things and, and shining light into them is essentially, you know, so that we can so I can make it to the space where I want to talk about solutions and solutions that make a lot of sense, you know? Um, so in, um, in conclusion here at the beginning of my little disclaimer, um, I will say that um, it is my understanding and belief that our minds are very powerful tools, very, very advanced um, quantum computer kind of thing. I don't even want to call it that because um, I think it's more um, beautiful <laughs> than to compare it to those kind of words, to compare it to computers. But um, I do, I, and I do think that computers are an inversion of our beautiful central organic system that, that you know is making us up um,
However, it you know the the foundation of this understanding comes from from the from that knowing, and for me, the the breaking out, the staying free, um, being protected, and and being able to hold those boundaries, it really always comes back to falls into that rock bottom space of sovereign worth and of ultimate purpose that that I ground myself within, and that so many beings do and. If you haven't got there yet, or if that's difficult for you, um, then just know that, that you are susceptible to mind control. You are, um, you will always be holding doubt in your vessel, in your mind, keeping space and wiggle room for um, the negative what ifs instead of <laughs> holding space and openness for the creative and positive opportunities of what ifs, right? And there's a big energetic and in, in intentional difference in that space, um, in, in that polarization of energy. And the negative agenda really knows that and really respects that and so they work really hard to um, mock, belittle, cast doubt against, poke holes in the, the one truth, the, the initial truth, right? So um, your strength and, and your protection against mind control can only ever be as strong as your initial faith to source or God or your higher self, your ancestors, um, your role here. If you think this is like a simulation in the Ready Player One type of thing, well, you know, the great observer, the, the, the user, whatever you want to say as that tying back to the before to the initial, to the Big Bang, whatever you want to see it as, right? Um, that is where I pull and draw my, my foundational faith from, that knowing and that space. It's unshakable, it's unchangeable. Um, it is pretty much the only one thing that is a guarantee. And if you allow that to be true for you, um, you you're building further on a very on a firm foundation. When you hold skepticism within your heart about that kind of foundation, well, from here on out, your foundation will be cracked and wobbly and unsure of it. No matter what you build on it, no matter what information you bring in, you know, no matter how heavy the structurings on the foundation become and seem solid and real, underlying is always going to be that foundational cracking that you are skeptical about your worth, your faith. Um, and in from those cracks, you know, in the foundation will come the negative agenda, will come some negativity that will fuel those those doubts and the fears and, um, and, and cause a lot of, um, can, they can cause a lot of confusion and a lot of, you know, negativity in your life. So, so why allow that um, is my perception. And anyways, so getting into the actual tactics here. And um, my, my hoping is to not cause more negativity. That, that's kind of why I give this little disclaimer at the beginning and really want people to understand their sovereign worth and tap into that within themselves, um, their unique you know, fractal bit that's beautiful and just to, to hold that and see it because um, when we start to talk about these really negative things and we start to see the um, never-ending, ever-changing ways that the negative can try to seek into our cracks, it can be disempowering and overwhelming. It can really cut people down. and put them in worse dark nights of the souls or rock bottoms or whatever than they were in before. And, and I hate to cause negativity. Um, you know, I really do. So that's why I just am getting wrapped up here at the beginning about really enforcing um, this underlying notion of 
of faith and worth and unconditional love. So, mind control tactics, right? Um, the, the main thing here is um, mind control has been around forever, right? And it can be um, things as simple and as um, well accepted, right, as, as social etiquette, tradition. Um, those, those things, those cultural things that um, our families, our ancestors pass down to us and place upon us, right? Um, the directional guidance, right? Morality, laws, codes to live by, rules, laws, um, commandments. Those in themselves are forms of control of mind control um, and it's um, this is this is why I get I feel argumentative about people who try to say mind control isn't real or, or whatever it's just because it, it's it's clear it's clear in social etiquette it's clear in um, manners say you know what I mean like um, all of these like finishing schools or um, I don't know you know there's just a multitude of very obvious ways that we control or train children to act in a certain way and that itself is mind control, okay? <laughs> now, that aspect is not usually what people are pointing to or talking about um, when they talk about mind control, and especially people use the phrase MK Ultra or, or um, Octarian Soldiers or um, NPCs or, or zombies or whatever, you know? Those types of mechanisms are what people usually just assume as like mind control and they just kind of lump it up into this sort of like um, extraordinary paranormal kind of like cloud of things and then and then we segregate things that like training children uh, <laughs> you know social etiquette religions traditions all of those kinds of um, codes that we live by we we try to keep separate, or society tries to keep it separate so much from mind control. Sort of like they want to have a negative and positive kind of mind control sections to where, oh no, these ones are positive, so let's not really examine them, let's not really talk about them. Um, that's not mind control, you know, because it's for your good. Well, well, <laughs> it's all mind control. And when we could get into that space and examine it more freely and more openly, well, we might make more headway. But of course, you know, the, the overarching negative agenda of the 3D matrix does not want us to do more cognitive examination um, across the spectrum. They really need us to divide and put things into boxes and leave them there because they're easily manageable, right? You can write algorithms, you can make predictive programming when things are in boxes and they stay there. Well, humans are not made really for that. <laughs> yeah, we love to define and categorize things and organize things, but our ever-changing body and mind and, and world really um, isn't meant to stay put, you know? It's meant to say, oh, this box these are in this box for now, but then they can be in this later, or, you know, they also intersect with these things. Um, so, another leg of this mind control mechanisms here is the, convenience, the convenient allowance of categories and boxes of division, but a real control around changing the boxes, the names, and, and the way things are divided up. Um, 
It's a perceived and allowed freedom. It, it's, it's a control mechanism. Um, and it's crucial to the stability of the negative orientation of their system. And so they want you to have choices, but just enough choices. You know, you're free to make the choices as long as they're 1 through 26 and they fit in the alphabetical order. You know, you're, you're free to make those choices. Um, if you were to try to go backwards or mix around the letterings, of course, you know, you're going to hit real strict consequences. Some, you know, some negative feedback because you're disrupting the system. Um, the system of control, right? So if we take into account this need for um, control and stability within the negative matrix, we can kind of use that as flags to realize true mind control, whether it's positively seeded mind control or negative mind control. The entire thing is we should be identifying these mechanisms of control and questioning them. Um, if they are in the monitoring of systems, if we realize things are flowing organically on their own, and then we have descriptions of what's happening that honestly um, describe what's happening, you know, <clears throat> that's one thing. But when we have organic systems functioning and then we have these um, falsities placed upon them about the whys or the hows, that is where control comes in. And that is where energy siphoning can happen. And... Um, That's kind of like the first recognition of that you're being infringed upon by some sort of mind control mechanism, right? Um, so again, like it's 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 so important to understand your own truth and to hear your light and hear your beacon and and to listen actually listen and react to it, you know, not to be swayed by outside forces. Um, now the outside forces, right? Um, it is just like it's very typical for us to see sort of like the negative versus the positive and to not think they're the same. We tend to see uh, mind control as something that comes through like hypnosis, through the television maybe, through like repetitive um, propaganda techniques that are pretty blatant and in your face, right? Um, however, it is also can also be things that are very under the radar, very sly, very um, seemingly natural type of control mechanisms. Um, and the the sliding scale of it, like I've said in so many videos, is 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 really like the what creates the fertile ground for the negative because they can slide as much truth into the into the negative into the lies as they want and um, it can really trick and trap people up which um, which again you know and I hate to just keep going back to this but this is why you know um, knowing your truth is is crucial in breaking out of the mind control But anyways, okay, so I've talked for like 20 minutes on here and I have barely even touched on what these actual tactics are. So here I'm going to just try to jump right into it and be pretty direct and hopefully not get caught up in the whys and the hows. <laughs> it's so easy to just like need to explain myself more fully um, and then lose track of the concrete points that I really want to get through. Um, which is why I usually make notes, but then I end up rambling and, and get lost in my notes. So <laughs> it's kind of like a lose-lose for me. So mind control in itself, right, we tend to think of it as those, those blatant things that are in our face. Um, and that is 
all well and good because they do come through those avenues. But there's also a more, um, or a less, I'll say, a less physical manner of control here. And it's frequency control. And just like um, our energetic intentions really set the tone for our experience here in reality um, within the ether, that frequency control sets the tone <laughs> and the stage for all of the mind control mechanisms that actually function and work in the solid 3D world. So the, this undertone of um, negativity, I guess, is, is really what it is. Um, it creates the perfect um, confusion to to start with, I guess, is what I want to say. Um, let me make a comp comparison to music and tones, and and this works perfectly because, as we've as I've, as as I've noted before, and I'm sure many of you know about the um, the swapping of tuning and the 440 hertz change. Um, or, or, or a little tweak, the alteration that the Rockefellers made within tuning of radios. And, and, and then that progression or acceptance of it within the academia and music world. And within all of the, um, the mainstream media world, I guess, and uh, you would call it. To where we have changed the tuning tones to frequencies that are disharmonious um, to sacred geometry, to the, to the universe in general, right? And, and of course, an extension, that means our inorganic body vessels, because what are we but made up of the same stuff that is all the organic world, right? Um, that underlying change of the current um, is like the it's the it's the ether that we all sit within. It's the background setting of the whole novel that everybody who is born, who is growing in the womb, is is subjected to, um, and it's the first um, it's the carpet of this major hallway or passageway that I have made as the sort of example. Um, in the 3D matrix, right? That the mind control is the main hallway passageway within the 3D matrix. And we have all of these doorways and avenues off of them, built off of them, and stairways and things um, that can then be led through as soon as we've walked through the door of servitude, you know, and, you know, um, given up our sovereign worth or our sovereign thinking, I guess, right? Our, our quest for sovereign truth, really, is what it is. We are agreeing to, to lie against our one truth when we bow down in servitude. As soon as you step through the door of the system, and unfortunately, it's kind of like as soon as you're born, or as soon as these days, like you're, yeah, as soon as you're born, you're birthed into that hallway of servitude and the carpeting on that hallway is this uncomfortable scratchy not, don't want to be there kind of feeling that they're creating with all of the frequencies of um, the technology right and so when we look at the switching of harmonics just to something that is just slightly disharmonious it causes the static, it causes a rippled effect that creates an uncomfortability. So the, the initial setting in that hallway is uncomfortable because of the, this rug that we, you're standing on that in itself feels quite uncomfortable, scratchy, itchy, you don't want to be there. Um, now they take this a level even further in today's world, right, because we have Wi-Fi signaling around. We have 4 or 5G like radiating. We have all of these other um, 
electronic pulses taking place within our um, our reality, our world, whatever you want to call this place, you know, plane, globe, whatever. Um, simulation, you know, this, it is infused with this disharmonious feeling right off the bat. And, um, and like I said before, it's control mechanism. It's, it's, it's assurance, <laughs> right, to the negative agenda's bank that it is going to keep you in there because um, it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you uncomfortable. It does. Of course, you don't want to slide into sovereign comfortability, positive self-love and worth when you're birthed into a place that's uncomfortable. So that has become a real crucial um, agenda for the matrix and the 3D um, settings to pursue and to amplify and to work within, create more manyness within um, frequency disruptions because they see it works. It works really well and it stays over time. And so, um, yeah, it's become their welcome carpet sort of in this, in this place, in space, unfortunately. Um, Now, on top of that welcome carpet, let's bring it to the, the time when you're birthed, right? When a, when a new human, a new user is accepted into this world and reality. Um, not only are we placed on this uncomfortable carpet, but we are literally tortured, <laughs> you know, um, from our first breath. And so many of us are injected with toxins and, and, and poisons at that time. Lots of us um, feel our first sense of neglect and disconnect because we're coming from, from a space of the womb, of unconditional comfort and support and an all-knowing presence around us of goodness and love. Um, and, and you're being so physically separated from that. And um, that in itself is, uh, is, is a traumatic experience, right? And... Um, our negative industrialized um, healthcare system, unfortunately, is just like a big bully in the schoolyard, kind of. <laughs> you know, they pull out the welcome wagon in this negative agenda world that is um, a torture chamber, really, you know. And so then our, neg then our first experiences here become negative. And the mind control is even more placed upon us because now they have a frequency control. Now they have an emotional control, right, as well. The mechanisms shut down. So they separate you from, you know, a positive harmonics and a positive feeling of frequency within your, your whole body vessel and within the ether in the setting. And then they infringe your direct physical body with harmful toxins and direct neglect and um, physical harm that causes the body vessel in itself to start be being in like attack mode or, or defense mode, I mean, right? Get your army going and, 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 and that in sense is also attacked with the emotional separation and neglect from just birthing and being put out there. But then a lot of people are met with, you know, um, emotionally disturbed parents and mothers and um, or no mother or whatever the case might be, you know, so we're set up for emotional um, turmoil at that same point. We're put into emotional torture and we're, we're given that kind of cut off of our emotional body. And then we're just left with like our, our, our thinking mind and um, it's it's, it's a painful experience, you know, in itself. It's, it's super painful. And um, when you put on top of that these um, disruptive mechanisms, the social disruptive mechanisms that happen immediately as soon as the baby's born, as soon as the parents are, you know, given that child, there is just an onslaught, an avalanche of ways that... Um, and tactics and tools that are used um, across these multitude of layerings, you know, um, of how to care for and shape that child. 
and it, it's even impressed upon the parent that, that you're the controller of the mind, that you're shaping this young mind, that the things that you do will impact them and change them and make them who they could be, you know? That itself is really false programming um, as well. And it's on the, the parental side of the spectrum, right? To ensure the tyrant-slave model, right? To ensure that the cycle of um, creator and um, creation is, is upheld, you know, but on, on a pedestal, right? Um, we as parents are really um, nailed in the head with this like obligatory kind of notion that we are molding the minds and the body and the well-being of this, this like blank slate person. And, and that's very unfair to the child. And it's, it's super unfair to the parent as well, right? And I've talked about this numerous times about um, this slave-master cycle that they trap us in, the servitude cycle, right? Um, and what better way to ensure coherence of the slave-master cycle but to implant it in, into the parent-child model so that the system, the government, those in the controllers, the higher, the hierarchy knows that the layerings below each layering is going to follow suit. It's going to follow these initial instructions of master, slave, teacher, student, creator, creation, better than, worse than, like higher up, lower than, knows it all, knows nothing, right? Um, that placement is assurance, again, to the negative system that it will keep going. It's a control mechanism that it places upon us that it is, it's its bread and butter. It has to know that each parent's going to instill this into their child because if they so choose, they can um, ignite their sovereign worth yet again and ignite it within their child. And um, if that happens, and when that happens, um, more healthy family units are created, stronger bonds um, and boundaries are really solidified within the family unit. And that is rooted in truth and light and love and it's unbreakable. And it's also unacceptable and unprocessable to the matrix systems, <laughs> the negative matrix systems. And um, they really have to make sure that that can't happen. In. So they work to break that familial bond um, as soon as possible and as much as possible and infringe upon it and poke holes in it as much as possible. And um, that's another reason why they allow these certain choices of, um, of traditions and of social norms and, and stuff because they, they know... Um, the truth within it, uh, like the hues of man, right? The different races, traditions, the different biospheres that each um, each tribe would inhabit and, and live within, right? That used to be a sacred communion. It used to be beautiful individual exploration of manyness um, in symbiosis with the world and in the little bubble of reality that you that that tribe or community or culture had created in their space um, that in itself again is not conducive to having an overall hierarchy system um, that feeds a single purpose right that will offer its energy up <laughs> to a negative service um, so what they've done, you know, slightly over years is that they've made these A-OK -okay boxes that still have their control mechanisms in place within the boxes so that they can kind of trick you and trick everybody into believing that, like, um, they have this community or tradition or they have this boundary that is OK, um, that is allowed. Um, now... It's, it's important to understand that the energetic intention of each individual within those boxes and within those systems, that is what breaks or makes 
the negative agendas control. And if everybody inside their little box is in there connected to their sovereign worth, you know, maybe it wouldn't change the title on the box or maybe it wouldn't even change a lot about the control mechanisms that are working within that uh, tradition. Um, but it changes the intention of the social interactions. It changes the feeling, the emotion um, within the group and within the collective as well. And that, the collective view, is where the negative agenda pulls its um, source of energy from, right? Um, its illusion, I guess, is created by the reflection of the collective. And um, as you can kind of see these days, they have really um, perfected this kind of divide and conquer tactic. And they know just about how long it's okay to allow this fake sense of freedom before they close the gate or, um, you know, allow certain amount of diversity until they turn everybody on each other for some reason, you know. Um, So I, I gave a little bit about the initial ideas of um, mind control settings within traditional things that we think of, like, you know, hypnosis, television, um, and also within the frequency control more, um, and, and in the emotional body, right? We have this, we have whole workings um, of mind control and of control of what the emotional body should look like. Um, I do really think that a lot of the academic branches, the ologies, um, have been maintained and allowed um, study within because the negative agenda is so purposefully steering the type of study and promoting the research and um, conclusions that they would like to and that really prop up their falsities and their illusions, right? So um, when we look at the whole category of psychology, say, and everything that's been built up on this, this whole world, um, it is very important to know that it's just another box that the negative agenda has created, a control mechanism that they have um, instructions and, and labels throughout that they've already okayed us to explore within and also promote exactly what is beneficial to their systems, and that's it. If it doesn't fit their parameters, they just cast it aside. They call it paranormal. You know, they say it's um, um, an exception. They love to say exceptions prove rules, too. And that in itself is such an inverted lie. It goes directly against what we would consider to be honest truth. Exceptions prove rules. Well, wouldn't exceptions in itself tell you the rule isn't valid? It isn't a rule, but no, 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 no. That's not what the academia world, that's not what the ologies want you to know. No, 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 no. That makes the theory more provable, makes it more solid, because there's obvious cracks in it. You know, you can see right by this, this way of working that there, there's some direct lies that they ask you to really be a part of as soon as you hit the door. And if, if you're not willing to be a part of the lies, then you can't go along with the show and you can't watch the whole thing. And you certainly aren't gonna laugh at their little comedic, comedic puns um, with the rest of the audience when you see it for what it is, you know? But they don't want those type of people in the audience. Um, like I said before, you know, you. You won't be admitted to the show. You're not allowed to even be a part of the recorded audience. 
when when you haven't gone along with the initial lie, you know, um, you will be cast out. You'll be on the fringe portion. You'll never be even, they will keep you as far away from the mainstream as possible because they don't want you to trigger it. They don't want you to disrupt it. They don't want you near it to remind it of the truth and, and, and spark up others to remember truth within themselves, you know. That's the absolute collapse of, of their whole thing, of their whole lives, right? Um, and, and I got to, into this a little bit at the end of the Mind Control episode 20 because I really wanted to end with a positive note about kind of breaking out of Mind Control. And I will, I'm actually going to do, since we're already at 45 minutes, I think I'll do a secondary video about... Um, how we break out of the matrix and how we could get other people to as well um, just because it's it, it is a, a lengthy topic and also um, I want to get into that when I'm closer to bringing in solutions so that things just make more sense as we're talking about them right um, so I don't and, and I hate to end this video on a more negative note as well but um, I feel like I've kind of I've kind of seeded in a lot of positivity throughout talking about this and gave a couple of like working points as to how we can sort of negate or um, balance out, I guess, you know, um, bring it back to the basics just a little bit each step of the way that we're confronted with these different tactics, right? Um, because their tricks only work if you allow them to, right? If you choose to believe the illusion, if you choose to go against the grain of your truth, you know? Um, and that, and that's why, again, and I'll get into this, this last thing about mind control techniques here, they, they know these things, and that's why um, they have this whole section um, or force, I guess police force or designated group of workers who are tasked with the assignment of um, constantly mocking and belittling, making fun of, inverting, poking at um, God, source, goodness, honesty, um, transparency, kindness, love, appreciation, right? Um, common logic even, common sense sometimes, right? Um, they have an entire arsenal of weapons, techniques, and tactics that purposefully attack that spiritual connection that we each so so organically do have um, it's it, it is very unfortunate and it is in itself a um, inevitable I guess is kind of the word I'm looking for like it, it we live in duality, right? And I've talked about so many times, there's contrast, there's good and bad. It, it, that's the world we live in. And so I am not trying to cast critical judgment, but I really, really, really want to highlight the absolute um, harm and negative intention that is purposefully um, aimed at the spiritual body. Because if, if they could get us disconnected from that, if they can get us to ignore the truth of that, well, they can get you to believe anything. <laughs> they can get If they can get you to go against your own best good, or if they could get you to be confused about what feels good and right, well, then they've got you where they want you, right? They can... Um, shuffle you off into any of these doorways, any of these passageways and stairways that are off of that main passageway, right? Um, 
as soon as you're in there and as soon as you are fully committed to being in there, right? It's one thing to be in there and be like, whoa, this is super uncomfortable. This looks weird. This isn't right. How do I get out of here? I don't, I don't like this. Um, doesn't feel right. Why? Questions, questions. Yeah. Like that's one experience that they can sort of feed off of. Um, but, but again, they, they're weary of that. They, they don't like that. Um, what they really want is full commitment to the hallway, to the uncomfortability of it, to being like, oh, this is so terrible. Oh, I have no way out. Oh, this is, it's just how it is. I guess I'll just keep going through it like this. And, um, yeah, what do you think is best? You know, um, it, and that's another t tool, you know, and it, it's a social hierarchy tool. And it's, it's built into this the same function, the master-slave function that they that they put on us right when we're born. We're always seeking confirmation, external validation from something above us, from something more powerful, more knowledgeable, more educated, um, more experienced, been here longer than us, right? Um, and that's one of the hardest things to break out of, and it's the hardest things to break out of because there's underlying truth in there. Um, that, that we each have to work out for ourselves, right? Because we do have a higher self. We do have a source higher than us. We do have um, an overseer, an observer of this, of ourselves, of our interactions in our body and, and of this world and life. And they take that truth and seed it with tons of lies and um, and so when we question it and when we want to break out of it it makes it even more difficult because we feel the truth somewhere in there like we're like it's like you're lost in the dark and you're like you know there was a doorway that you came through but you've been turned around so many times that like now you can never know where that one doorway is and you just feel through the dark like knowing it's there somewhere but you can't you can't feel it and the negative agenda is got night vision goggles on, just watching you like a moron, almost there, not there. And anytime you're almost glazing the door with the wall that has the door on it, they'll give you a quick spin or, or they'll, they'll, you know, poke you from the other side or they'll whisper from over in the other corner and be like, we're over here, you know, or turn around or don't go that way or, or whatever it might be, right? Because they know and they need you and they don't want you to find that true doorway. They're very happy to keep you spinning around. Um, you know, yeah, know there's a door somewhere. They really want you, and, and, and they can never take that knowing away from you, right? And the negative agenda is super cunning and sly. They understand that. They know they can't take that knowing away from you, that there was a door you came through, that it is in here somewhere. Uh, and so they use it to their benefit right? And they're like, well, we'll just spin the floor around. We'll keep the walls moving. We'll turn our around a hundred times or, or whatever. Um, because they must keep you in their controlled room, or in the dark or whatever you want to see, whatever for this, for this specific analogy, right? Um, that's the whole name of the game. And when, when, we are at a place where we accept that, well, then it comes quite obvious that, of course, they're going to have mind control mechanisms and all those kind of things in, in the mix, you know, booby traps in the whole place. So, um, quickly here at the end, I'm almost hitting an hour. Um, I don't want to go on for too long and make this, you know, crazy long video. Um, but I do want to make people aware of these kind of uh, things in their own lives so that they can start to see and work within the mechanisms in your own world and mind to see what are those unique um, tactics in your setup and how do you identify them and how do you call them out for what they are. And it's, it's maybe not about just finding your way out right now. It's just about stopping where you're at and, and looking for as much clarity as you can grasp where you're at and working from each conscious moment to at least search for the truth. At least be as true with yourself as you can be. And um, in that intentional alignment of seeking truth, you know, you're malaligning the matrix on its own. 
you're bu you're busting out of the mind control just by doing that, right? And then each each step further becomes a little bit more easier, a little clearer. Um, so, yeah, mind control, um, frequency control, the the manipulation of how each user acts within the system is what keeps the system functioning. And it's so crucial for us to remember that and to keep that in mind as we're making our way through, right? How are we um, conducting ourselves and how are we operating? Are we being easily controlled or are you causing some disruptions? Are you causing some frictions, you know? And at least if you, you're challenging the reins of control, um, if we could all start to do that, the collective would change so quickly, right? Um, and so with that, I think I'll close this video here for now. I am going to make, like I said, a follow-up video um, quickly about like how we can counteract a lot of these um, tactics that they use and how we can break and shake apart the matrix in some places and help others as well, hopefully. So I hope you'll help. Uh, I hope you'll tune in next time for when I talk about that. Um, in the meantime, you can always find me on amoriespeaks.com or over on Telegram um, under amoriespeaks. So have a beautiful day or evening wherever in the world you are, and uh, I'll catch you next time.